Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Rachel Colton of RMC. For today's project, I'm going to be showing you how to incorporate beads into a macrame wall hanging. For this project, I've teamed up with an awesome company from the UK called El Camino. El Camino makes and sells handmade travel beads, which they call steps, to commemorate the different places that you have traveled across the globe. So for today's project, I'm going to be using their steps to document the places that I have gone scuba diving. In addition to your beads or your steps, you're going to need either a piece of driftwood, a stick, or a dowel rod that you've purchased from the craft store or the hardware store. You're also going to need your string or your rope. I'm going to be using a three millimeter two ply twist rope from modernmacrame.com. You're also going to want either some masking tape or painter's tape and a sharp pair of scissors. So let's get started. For today's project, I'm going to be using a piece of driftwood that's approximately 14 inches or 36 centimeters. You're also going to want a piece of rope that you've cut to about 30 inches or 76 centimeters. And all you want to do is tie this rope to either end of your stick using a regular double knot. For the first portion of our design in which we'll be incorporating our beads or our steps, you need to cut six pieces of rope to approximately 10 feet each, which is the same as 305 centimeters. We're going to secure three of those ropes to one side and three to the other using what's called a lark's head knot. So to form a lark's head knot, take your first piece of string and find the two loose ends. Line those up and then find your way to the center of your rope, which will now have a loop. You're gonna take this loop and you're going to place it over and behind your stick and pull down a little bit in the back. Then you're gonna feed the two loose ends through that loop, pull them all the way back, and then pull down on your two loose ends to tighten the rope up to the piece of wood, and this is called a lark's head knot. I'll show you one more time how to secure a piece of rope using a lark's head knot on this other side to keep the stick balanced. Take your second piece of string and find the two loose ends, line those up, find your way to the center of this piece of rope, which will now have a loop. Take your loop over and behind and pull down a little bit in the back, just enough to feed your loose ends all the way through. Then pull down on your loose ends to tighten the rope. So now we need to attach the remaining strings. We need two more on this side and two more on this side. What we're going to do is we're gonna start over here on the right hand side and we're going to create a series of diamond shapes using a diagonal clove hitch knot. To make a diagonal clove hitch knot, what you wanna do is take your leftmost string. This will be the filler string that comes across at a diagonal, and these remaining strings will be our working strings. So what you wanna do first is pick up the next string over toward the right, and you'll see that it's situated behind your filler string to begin. So what you need to do is take that string, cross it over in front of your filler string, and you're creating this loop over here on the side. Now take your working string behind the filler string through the loop you've created, pulling it all the way through. Then you wanna tug down on it so that it creates this little loop around your filler string and then tighten that up to the top. Now we're gonna repeat that, but your working string is now over, situated over here to the left instead of behind. But once again, you wanna cross it on top of your filler string behind and through the loop, tug down, and then pull tight to match the other half at the top. Now we're gonna repeat that with the next string over toward the right. It's situated behind your filler string, so cross it over in front, 
around behind, through the loop, pull down, and pull tight to meet the others. Now you're going to repeat that. Cross in front, around behind, through the loop, pull it down, and then pull it tight to the top. Now you can see we've reached the midpoint of these six strings we have over here. So we're gonna move over and we're going to create the other side of this first diamond, which is actually just the bottom portion of a diamond. So pick up your rightmost string. This will come across at a diagonal as the filler string. Pick up the next string over to the left, bring it around in front, then behind and through, pull down, and then pull tight. Now repeat, cross in front, go around behind and through, pull down, and pull tight. Now repeat that with the next string over toward the left, bring it around in front, behind and through, pull down, and tighten. And now repeat. And we've reached the center point on this side. What we're going to do now is we're going to close up this bottom portion of a diamond and we're going to continue into our second diamond. So we're going to keep working with this filler string that started over here, and we're going to continue making diagonal clove hitch knots all the way across. Now there is a reason that we want this side to continue toward the center, and you'll see that when we get to the bottom of this first portion of our design. So what we've done now is we've started into our second diamond, so we need to come over here and do the other side which means we are picking up the third string over from the right as our filler string. And then these two will be our working strings. So take this next one over, cross it in front, around behind, through, pull down, tighten, and repeat. Cross in front, around behind, through, and tighten. And then the same thing with this last string. Now we've created the top half of our second diamond and this is where we're going to add our first bead or step. So what you want to do to prepare for that is find these two center strings and find your way to the loose ends. You can already see that one of my ropes is frayed quite a bit and the other is beginning to fray. That will make it very difficult to put your beads on. So what you want to do for each of these two center strings is you want to wrap them in a small piece of painter's tape. So for this particular project, I'm going to be documenting the places that I've gone scuba diving. So I'm going to use the North American region step, and I'm going to string that on one rope at a time. So just feed one through and then kind of hold that down toward the side of the bead while you string the other. The other one might need a little extra push. And then just feed that up to meet the knots that form the top of your diamond. Once your bead or your step is on, we're gonna close up this diamond and then work into the next one. So just like we did here at the top, you're going to take the leftmost string across at a diagonal as your filler string, and we're going to make diagonal clove hitch knots until we reach the center. Once we reach the center on the left, we're going to form the right hand side and continue all the way across just like we did up here at the top. Once you come all the way across, you're ready to do the other side. So once again, you're going to find the third string over from the right as your filler string. And you're going to take the other two strings to the right and form diagonal clove hitch knots. 
So the next two places I went diving were in Australia. So I'm going to add one of the silver beads with the engraving for Australia. And what you want to do is find those center two strings again. The two that we taped are always going to remain in the center. So you only have to do that taping once. I want to make sure that the word Australia is facing the correct direction and then feed my ropes through the bead or step one at a time and then you just feed that up to meet your knots. And then what we're going to do from here is we're going to continue this pattern that I've taught you until we have six full diamonds with our steps in the center. We're actually going to continue the last one all the way across. This will be used to connect the right side to the left side of the design. If you feel like you have this pattern mastered from completing the right hand side, feel free to skip this next part. You're going to do the same thing on the left. However, the only difference is your continuation from diamond to diamond is going to be going in the opposite direction. Take your right most string, hold it at a diagonal. Take the next one over, which is situated behind. Cross it over in front. Bring it around behind and through the loop. Then pull down on it before you pull it tight to the top. Now it's situated over here to the side, so cross it in front. Take it around behind and through the loop, then pull down and pull tight. Repeat with the next string over. Once you come to the center, you want to switch sides, so pick up the leftmost string. And this time the left string is going to continue all the way across. When you're finished on this side, we want to again go over to the third string from the left this time, and this will complete the top half of this diamond. Once you've completed this top portion, we're ready to start adding our beads or steps. So just like we did on the other side, find the center two strings. And you're going to want to add a little piece of painter's tape so that you don't get this fray. Once you have your first bead on this side, we're going to do the same thing we did over on the right. But we want our continuation from diamond to diamond to be going toward the center. So on this side, we're going to take this rightmost string across and we're going to stop at the center. Then we'll pick up the other side and go all the way across. You're going to continue this pattern until you've completed six full diamonds with a bead or step in the center of each, and it will be a mirror image of the other side. Once you have both sides complete with this continuation at the bottom, we're going to connect our two sides to form a V shape coming down. So what we need to do is on this right portion, we need to take the leftmost string and on the left side, we need to take the rightmost string. So if you're looking at all your strings together now, these are the center two. So holding on to this right center string, pick up the left center string situate it behind the filler string. And now you're going to sort of hold these together with your thumb, cross the working string over, take it around behind and through the loop, pull it down and then pull it tight to meet the other knots. And now holding on to this sort of tight, you're going to repeat that, cross it over in front, around behind, pull down and pull tight, 
and that will connect the two sides of our designs. And now we're gonna continue on with the next two strings over to the left to form the top of a center diamond. So pick up the next string over and form a double clove hitch knot. And then the next string over toward the left and create a double clove hitch knot. And now we're going to move over and create the other side. So for the other side, you need to find the sixth string from the right. This will be your filler string coming across and you're going to take the next two strings to the right to form the top half of the diamond on the right hand side. Once you've completed the top half of the diamond, you need to find your center two strings and you need to add a piece of tape just like we did before so you can string on your bead. And now what we need to do is close up this diamond. So you're gonna take the leftmost string and you're going to have it be the filler string coming across toward the center, just like we did before. Then you wanna pick up this right string and you're going to have that be your filler string coming across at a diagonal. And once you get to the center, you just wanna do one final set of clove hitch knots to connect the two sides and close up that final diamond. So this is the first portion of our design and this is the most complicated. So if you made it this far, you're doing great. Now we're gonna add some layers and some additional depth to our project. The next portion of the design, I've cut another piece of rope to about 10 feet or 305 centimeters. And we actually wanna fold this piece of rope into thirds. So hold one loose end, drop down a bit and loop your string up, then feed this through your hand until that loop matches up with your other loose end. And once you've folded that into thirds, hang on to this loose end and this loop, and I'll zoom in and show you how to attach this to your project. We want the shorter portion of the rope to be facing toward the right side of your project. And then we're gonna drop this loose end, which is connected to the longer portion of the rope. Now we're gonna take this string and we're going to attach it to the right side using a lark's head knot again. So take your loop over, pull it behind, then feed your loose ends through, and one of them will be twice as long as the other, and then pull down to secure that at the top. Okay, so once you're attached over here, take your long end, Create a curve coming behind your design and we'll attach it over here on the left. So take this string over your stick and then behind, then pull it through toward the center of the project. Now take it behind the stick and you've got a loop here over the front, through the loop, and then pull tight. For this next portion of the design, you need to cut a bunch of individual pieces of rope to about 39 inches or 100 centimeters each. The number of ropes that you'll need depends on the size of your curve. I'm gonna start with 30, but I may end up needing more. We're gonna secure each string to the curve using a lark's head knot, just like we did here. And you're going to continue this until this entire piece of curved rope is filled with lark's head knots. For this portion of the design, you're going to need another four pieces of rope, each cut to about 10 feet or 305 centimeters. 
Now our filler strings don't need to be as long as our working strings, so we're gonna attach this unevenly. The shorter end needs to be about as long as this diamond curve and the fringe. Your longer end is gonna be toward the outside, and we're gonna connect this using a lark's head knot between these two elements. Now you're gonna do the same thing with a second piece of rope you want the shorter ends to be about the same length and you want them to be next to each other. So line up their loose ends facing the center of these four strings that we're going to be working with and attach that one with a lark's head knot. Now you have these four strings with your longer strings on the outside and your shorter strings on the inside. You need to do the same thing over on the right. To make a spiraling half square knot, what you need to do is take the leftmost string, cross it in front, then take the rightmost string on top of the one you crossed over, then take it behind the center two, pull it up through this loop on the side, then take the two working strings and tighten them to the top. Now you're going to repeat the same thing, taking this leftmost string again over the center two, the rightmost string on top, behind the center two, up through the loop on the side, then pull those two working strings tight. You're going to repeat this over and over and over again until you have a spiral that comes down to the length of this center point. Now on this side, I want my spiral to be a mirror image of the other side. So we're actually going to use the opposite string on top. So on the right side, I'm gonna take the rightmost string over the center two I'm gonna take the leftmost string on top of that one, cross it behind the center two, pull it up through this loop on the side, and then pull it tight to the top. And then for my next one, I'm gonna again take the right over center, left on top, behind the center two, through the loop, and pull tight. Now you're going to continue this spiral until it's about the same length as this one so that we can have them meet in the center. To make the gathering knot, you're going to take your two spirals and you're going to bring them together to meet at the center and hold on to those with your thumb. Then you're going to take this piece of rope that you've cut to about three feet and you're going to hold it parallel to your fringe with a little bit of extra sticking up over the top of those spirals. Now you're gonna drop down a bit and form a loop with this piece of string. Then you're gonna take this long end and you're going to wrap it around all the pieces of string. Keep this one sticking out above and you wanna wrap it fairly tightly beginning at the bottom of those spirals at least five or six times. Once you've wrapped it five or six times, you're gonna find that loop that you made at the bottom. Take this long loose end and feed it through the loop. Now you wanna hold on to that lightly with your thumb while you take the short end at the top and pull it. That's going to pull the loop up and the loop is going to pull the other end of the string up into the part that you wrapped. Once you see that it's reached the middle, you can take both ends and give them a little tug to tighten up that knot. And now just take a sharp pair of scissors, cut this piece at the top as close to the knot as you can. And now they are connected in the center. 
For this last part of the design, I'm going to show you how to make a four strand braid. What you'll need is four strings cut to about five feet each, which is the same as about 152 centimeters. We're going to attach two strings to the side and two strings to the side using a lark's head knot. To make a flat four strand braid, you wanna think of this as two sections or two sides. So you have your right two strings and your left two strings. Now on each side, we're gonna cross the rightmost string over the leftmost string. So with these first two, take your right string over your left, and then with these two strings over here, again, take the right over the left. Now, once you've crossed the right over the left on either side, you wanna take these two in the center, and you're gonna take the left on top of the right. To make the rest of the braid, you're going to continue this pattern. So you have two strings on the right, two on the left. Over here on the right, take the rightmost over the left. And with these two strings, take the right over the left. Then with the two in the center, take left over right. You're going to continue repeating this pattern until you have your desired length. We want ours to come all the way to the center so that when we gather it together in the middle with the other side, it sits above this diamond. So I'll show you how to do this one more time. You'll need another piece of string that you've cut to about two feet or 61 centimeters. Take one of your loose ends and you're going to line it up parallel with your other strings with about an inch or an inch and a half sticking up over the top of the design. With the longer loose end, you wanna come down about four or five inches and make a loop. And then you wanna take the rest of that longer loose end and start wrapping it around all of the strings that you've gathered up at least five or six times around. And then once you've wrapped that five or six times around all of your strings, you wanna find that loop that you created, feed the end through and kind of hold on to it with one, of you, one or two of your fingers. Then take the loose end at the top and you're going to start gently pulling on that, which will pull up on the loop. And then the loop will catch that other loose end and pull it into the gathering knot. Once you see that it is reached about the center, you wanna take both loose ends and tug on those. Now, if this piece was long enough, I would just incorporate it into the fringe, but since it's so short, I'm gonna cut it off as close to the knot as I can. And I'm gonna cut this piece off as close to the knot as I can. Now I want this piece to hang behind the other two layers here, behind the spiral and behind the diamond. So just tuck that back in front of this layer that's just pure fringe. So just take your sharp pair of scissors and you wanna just cut off the ends in the shape of a curve or a point, whatever you'd like to do. And for this design, I'm also going to cut this portion of the fringe under the gathering knot a bit shorter so it looks like a tassel. Once you have all of your fringe trimmed to your desired length and shape, you are now finished and ready to hang this on the wall and enjoy your piece. And thanks to El Camino, I now have a wall hanging that tells the story of my scuba diving travels. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you'll give it a try and please check out El Camino at elcaminobracelets.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.